Today we'll be showing you how to play PSP games in Linux with PSP. Hey guys, it's Joel here with Make Tech Easier. PPSSPP is one of the easiest to use PSP emulators. Theoretically, you can run it, select a game file, and almost immediately you'll see most of PlayStation Portable's titles run on your screen without a hitch. Learn how you can install PPSSPP in Linux and customize how it works. If you have a powerful computer, you can also implement upgrades that can dramatically improve how all games are presented and performed in PPSSPP. PPSSPP is quite popular, but it's absent from many popular distributions. Among them, as a not so random example, Ubuntu. To install it in most Debian based distributions, you first need to add its official repository to them. You should then refresh the list of available software with the command. Finally, proceed to the installation of the application itself with the command. To play an actual game, you will need a copy of the game stored locally, usually in ISO or CSO format. Select File and Load, and then from the next window select the game's file. PPSSPP will load the image and run the title automatically. For full screen mode, double click in an empty spot of the emulator's main interface. If you have a joypad set up, the emulator will probably have picked it up. The controls will have been mapped based on the mapping the PlayStation gaming family has used for decades. On the keyboard, the defaults are the cursor keys for the D-pad, with Z as X, A as square, S as triangle, and X as circle, with space for start and V for select. The analog nub is mapped to I, K, J, L, or up, down, left, and right. If your joypad wasn't recognized, or you don't like the default key map, you can change them in the settings. PPSSPP gives access to the same options from two different points. One of them is its typical top row menu if you have PPSSPP running in window mode. This menu is inaccessible in full screen mode. The full set of options and settings, however, is only accessible through the settings option. Keep a mental note of this option for you may need it in the future. If a title has any problems with its graphics, try changing the emulator's rendering mode to software rendering slow. This has much lower performance, but also significantly increased compatibility. Although rarely needed, in some cases it can be a one-way street for the proper reproduction of a title that's trouble free. In contrast to the software rendering we saw in the previous step, post-processing shader does not help solve problems and compatibility issues, but it can dramatically change how PPSSPP presents all PSP games. Post-processing shaders are filters applied to the game directly on the GPU. They can, for example, smooth out annoying pixels in graphics. Despite having a well-respected collection of outstanding games, the PSP hardware-wise was not only based on what is today considered ancient technology, but also had the disadvantage of being portable. Well, yes, obviously a portable console should be, first and foremost, portable. The reason I mention this as a disadvantage is that as hardware shrinks, so does its performance. So although the PSP was actually released after PlayStation 2, its actual performance is far lower than its big brothers. We won't even mention the following generations of Sony's consoles. All this is my polite way of saying that PSP games usually look much worse than anything running on a PlayStation 2 or newer. PSP's actual resolution was tragically low at 480 by 272 pixels, 16 times smaller than the already old Full HD resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Fortunately, PPSSPP can do something about this little problem. 
The rendering solution option allows you to change the resolution of the emulated games to a multiple of the actual PSP resolution. The 4 times value is pretty much perfect for Full HD monitors. Usually, the higher the resolution, the higher the emulator's requirements. In this case though, PSP was based on such outdated technology and PPSS PP is so optimized that most PCs won't sweat pushing the resolution even higher if your monitor can take it. The options in the texture scaling section can dramatically improve how a game displays and quite the opposite, turn it into a nightmarish mess. Their effectiveness and quality of results depends on the type of each game's graphics. Are they two-dimensional or three-dimensional? Texture scaling is ideal for 3D graphics as it can upgrade the surfaces used in all 3D models that create a game's world. That is why we cannot provide predefined values and settings that will offer optimal results for everyone. As with post-processing shaders, it all depends on both the individual game and the user's preferences. However, it is worth fooling around with these options to see their results in action on each title. Some might end up feeling like wholly different games. Others will turn into Picasso wannabes. You can't win all the time. PPSSPP includes an FPS counter you can and should enable to see the toll your tweaks on the emulator's options have on actual performance. Control mapping allows you to remap the PSP's physical buttons on your keyboard. And yes, this includes the NUP the little analog stick that was, thankfully, ignored by many games. And that's it! To enjoy most of the games as they were designed to be played, you could use a PS4 joypad with a Bluetooth receiver on your PC or an older PS2 one with an adapter. They're the closest you can get to the PSP's actual button configuration on a PC. Did you find this tutorial useful? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Well, that's it from me. As always, if you love tech as much as we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the bell on, and you'll be notified with our latest and greatest tech-savvy videos. See you next time.